All right, so um, we're going to be talking about how to find an exponential rule from a table. So this is going to be one of three videos going over these exponentials. So what I want to do is relate it to what you know about lines. So when we have a linear function, um, we start here at 0, 3, and you can see that each step it's going up by 5. So I'm actually adding 5 each time. So if you see repeated adding like that or repeated uh, subtraction, that indicates that it's a linear function. And if it's a linear function, it follows this formula, y equals mx plus b, which means that the slope is the what it's adding or subtracting by. And then the b term is where it started. So this formula, if I were to write it out, would be y is equal to 5x plus 3. Now on an exponential, you know it's not linear because if we look at these values here, 3, 15, 75, 375, it's jumping up by quite a bit. Um, it's not a consistent number that we're adding or subtracting. It's actually multiplying. Now if you want to figure out what it's multiplying by, and it doesn't matter if these numbers are going up or they're going down. If you want to figure that out, you divide it, 15 divided by 3, is 5. 75 divided by 15 is 5. So this is actually repeated multiplication, repeated times 5. And this is the way these rules are set up. So you can see that our initial value, that's our zero step, that's right here. And then the b term is the multiplier. So this rule right here would be y is equal to, it starts off at 3, and then we multiply that by 5 to the x power. Okay. Now as far as what happens with a linear and exponential, you can probably already tell from the tables, but I have some pictures of some lines. So the linear one, if you look, when I go from 0 to 5, it, you know, it gets up to 10. It's definitely kind of a steep line, but it's only going up to 10, whereas the exponential, the numbers are much higher a lot quicker. I mean, by step 3, we're already at 375. So I graph the exponential like this. So in addition to looking at the values on the table, looking at the rules, it's also very obvious by looking at the graphs. The exponential will have this curved sort of appearance where it starts off kind of flat at the bottom and spikes up, and a linear one is just a straight line. So I'm going to go ahead and use what I just talked about to uh, figure out the rules to these two tables down here. So when I look at this, I could tell 15, 45, 135, I'm definitely going up. I'm definitely not adding by the same amount because there's quite a big jump from 45 to 135 and from 135 to 405. So I know this is exponential. So I know that it starts off here at 15. That's the initial value. And then from 15 to 45, if I divide 45 by 15, I'm going to get 3. If I divide 135 by 45, I'm going to get 3 again. So this is actually multiplying by 3 every single time. And you can always check things in the calculator multiple times to make sure that it works, but um, this does. So that's my multiplier, and then the x goes up here. The x, the input, is actually the exponent. So then when I go down to this table over here, I got 4, 28, 196. Again, it's jumping up by way too much uh, for me to think that there's adding going on. It's definitely, even if it was adding a big number, it's not the same number. I mean, here I'm going from 4 to 28, and over here it's 196 all the way up to uh, 1372 already. So again, this is definitely looking exponential to me. Um, it starts off here at the 4, and then from 4 to 28, that's times 7. Uh, 196 divided by 28 is... 7, so it's times 7 every single time. So that means my multiplier is 7 and the input is x. So here's a couple of other tables I did. Um, this time if you look, the values are going down. Here I'm starting with 100. I go to 96, go from 96 to 92. Not that big of a jump every time. In fact, if you look, it's basically subtracting 4. So each time I go on a step, it's subtracting 4. So I have my initial value. This is definitely looking linear to me because it's repeated subtraction. So I'm going to start off here at 100, and then it's going to subtract 4 each time. So that's my linear function. Now this one here, it, it you know these numbers aren't that far apart, so that may be going on here. I mean, these look like they're apart by 50. Um, 
if this was a part by, if this was minus 50, this would be 100. So I definitely know that I didn't do repeated subtraction here. Um, what happened here was um, probably multiplying. But the thing is, is that I'm multiplying to get smaller numbers. So remember, every time you're multiplying repeatedly, but the numbers are becoming smaller, it's because you're multiplying them by a fraction. So every single time the b term on an exponential, because that's what this is, is a fraction, the numbers will actually get smaller. So if I, if I divide 150 by 200, so I'm going to try a couple of these here. So 150 divided by 200, I get 0.75. Um, I got this 112.5 divided by 150, again 0.75. Okay, so that's what I'm multiplying by. So that means that I started off here at 200, and then 70, I can write 0 0.75. You could write it actually this way if you want, um, but very often they're actually going to use fractions. And in uh, one of the videos coming up on exponentials, you'll see why that is. But this is the one that is usually preferred. So I have the, the 3 fourths to the x power. So you can see the difference in the rules of what happens is that this is what's called exponential decay. Okay, because you can see the lines actually drooping down. Whereas on this one over here I did in the previous example, this would be exponential growth. That means it's going up. So um, if, you're, if you're multiplying by a number that is greater than 1, even by a little bit, even if it's 1.01, that's a growth. And the minute it's below, even like 0.99, this is what's going to happen. It's actually going to drop. So let's try a couple more here. So on this one here, it looks like I have initial value of 5,000. And then um, I'm going to divide here. So a little bit I could tell already this is 4 fifths. This is also a 4 fifths. So it's multiplying by 4 fifths, and then my x goes there. And then on this one, um, definitely not linear, linear. I dropped from 1,000 to 250 already. So um, this one looks like I actually multiplied this by 0 0.25, or 1 fourth. And the same thing happened here. So that's another thing about decay is that the smaller this fraction is, it's going to have a bigger impact. So I dropped from 1,000 to 250, from 250 to 60. This is, this is having a drastic effect. So what this means, by the way, when you look at a fraction, is if you multiply 5,000 by 4 fifths, it means 4 fifths of it is there after I do it. So basically what I did is this would represent um, a 1 fifth decrease. So one of the things um, kids will often mess up on this is when you give them this table and you'll say, well, what's the decrease? They'll say, well, the decrease was 4 fifths. Well, 4 fifths is what it was multiplied by. The decrease was actually 1 fifth because if you subtract 4 fifths from 1, you'll get 1 fifth. So this is a 20% decrease. Um, and then on this one right here, this a lot of times people say, oh, it was a 25% decrease. This, that's the multiplier. This is actually a 3 fourths decrease. Um, which is a 75% decrease. So just look at the difference between this one here, where I dropped from 1,000 to 250, to this one up here, which actually is uh, the multiplier is 0.75. This actually is a 0.25 decrease. If there's only a 25% decrease, you can see the numbers aren't, you know, the difference between them isn't that much, whereas down here it's quite significant. So be very careful with that mistake. Um, because with these types of questions, there's two things involved. There's finding out what the multiplier is for the rule, and then there's also the question involved, which is what is the actual decrease. So the way you figure that out is you basically do 1 minus the multiplier. So if you're ever asked what the decrease actually was, that's how you do it. And that's how you find exponential rules from a table.